Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Electronica 2012 and I'm joined by Brian Wilkin and Douglas Kent from Avnet. Guys, just been listening with interest to your presentation on uh, supply chain risks, something we've been talking about for some time and was kind of put into context over the last couple of years with Fukushima and then what happened in Thailand with the floods. One would hope as an industry we'd learn from these kind of things. Have we learned? You know, um, I think we've had a lot of really great discussions about what are the risks in the supply chain, and I think there's been a lot of studies done about them. Um, but I would say while we may have some visibility to where, where the risk may lie inside of our supply chain, we haven't done a lot, whole lot to start down the pathway of how do we mitigate, how do we avoid, how do we fix a risk out there mm. in our supply chain. So. Now, part of it could be that when we came back out of the uh, out of the crises in 2009, that we had such a booming industry that everybody kind of put it in the back of their mind and said, okay, well, that's gone, and so we're back to business as normal. Mm. But the fact is, those risks are still there, yeah. and people are going to have to take some time and effort, as we were talking about in our presentation, to really say, what are my risks in my supply chain, and what is the strategy I need to make sure that my supply chain will survive the next time something yeah. happens. Yeah, and it's a complex supply chain, and it's even your supplier's supply chain. It's a really, really complicated ecosystem. Just quickly, um, the uh, storm Sandy on right. the East Coast. Any impact to the electronic supply chain to speak of? You know, uh, it's not like something that we felt from our side, though I would be sure that some of the people in the Americas had problems mm. because uh, there have been delivery problems into our customers on the Northeast Coast. Um, what was interesting was there was a, an article in one in, in the Economist the other day. It was really talking about business continuity and how many people actually had a plan in place. And they said, roughly 20% of all um, of all big companies do not have a business continuity plan that actually looks from end to end inside of their own supply chain. And what's also was interesting was they highlighted a couple of companies, so you can go look at the article, that some of them had a plan to deal with the water and some of them did it, didn't. And so there were cases then of yeah. some people functioned and some people had no telephone service. Yeah, yeah. So, so interesting and, times. And you know how they apply it is, is key. And Doug, you were, you were talking a little bit about how you assess a risk because you know what what at first might appear to be a major risk might might not be major compared to something else how do you how do you measure those how do you value those risks well we use a measure which is called VAR which is value at risk it was a measure that more traditionally have been used in the financial community mm -hmm. but simply described as the combination of the probability times the impact of the risk so in the first instance, of course, we should focus on those risks which we have some degree of control over. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of media hype about risks that we can't control. And a lot of the geopolitical risks, we virtually have no, you know, we have no control over those. So we, we can't, for example, reduce the probability of those risks. But we can, as Brian just described, reduce the impact to our businesses. Right. And that goes back to business continuity. So if we're going to measure risk, it becomes important for us to be able to set a quantifiable measure. And that measure is VAR. And once we understand the VAR, then we can prioritize which risks we want to focus on. The first cut, however, should be the ones we can control. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, in terms of valuing them, have you found that's, that's kind of big news to to people out there in the past, have they not really valued in that way? And you gave a nice example of, of airline lateness, you know, the difference between being late and being really late and the impact that has. Um, have you found with your customers that they, they don't really have a true grip on the value of their risk? Well, once we take a look at the measure, it, it, it sometimes is deceptively simple. Mm. So if you take, for example, what's the impact to the business, for example, of, of uh, an un, you know, unanticipated event like the, storm, the Sandy storm, for mm. example, Storm Sandy, um, you know, to actually put a number on the potential, the impact that could have to our business is not quite as easy as it seems. Mm. So I think intuitively people understand it, getting down into the details of actually putting the calculation together, few are able to do that. Mm. Now the understanding, we had enough sobering reminders that the understanding is there. It's now a, a boardroom objective and building those risk and business continuity plans is, is an initiative which we're going to see a lot more momentum on. Okay. And you kind of went to town with the, um, with, the, with the flying analogies. We have a new kind of um, system that gives you an overview that you were talking about, control tower. What do you mean by that? I understand what that means at the airport. Hopefully it works there. How does it work in the supply chain? 
Yeah, well, we can question how well it works in the airport, but um, as it relates to the supply chain, similar example. So if you're flying around, you may encounter, for example, potential disruption, and the same is true within a supply chain. So if we can identify the potential disruptions that are occurring, then we can make course corrections in our supply chain. So we first have to identify those potential disruptions. And, and the reason the control tower becomes so important is because we have to predict the disruptions before they become disruptions, which means we need a great deal more of supply chain visibility than that which we have traditionally within our supply chain today. So we very much have to focus on getting that visibility, which means we have to actively collaborate with our supply chain trading partners, yeah. both customers and suppliers. Yeah, and that means you've got to dig deep in both directions and really try and not just see what is going to happen, but predict, predict what might happen. And <laughs> and that again is something that sounds a little bit easy, but we're we're asking, you know, supply chain partners to share data with us that sometimes um, there are trust issues relative to that that are already inhibiting collaboration, and we need to overcome those issues in order to gain that data, and and that gives us a, a more holistic view of the supply chain, and we we will all see mutual gain with that, but there are considerable barriers to overcome. Okay, and Brian, I, I guess that means collaborative visibility, if we can get more visibility in the supply chain, we can achieve more in terms of creating a better supply chain, but also taking that risk out. Well, yeah, I mean, I think a long time, for a long time we've kind of had mercenary arrangements between ourselves over someone wins and someone loses. Mm. And in many ways we'd say that a lot of the costs have really been driven out from a pure component level pricing. And now we're now to the point of really talking about how total cost of ownership and how can we really, you know, make sure that we can produce for our customers when they want it, mm. where they want it, and a price point that they can afford. Um, and if we're going to go towards these things, and we are because the industry and our customers are driving us there, that means we're, we as, as suppliers with manufacturers need to be working a lot better together and mm. closer together to be able to go ahead and do these kind of things for those end yeah. customers out there. And that means understanding what you refer to as cost to serve as well as just cost of the goods that are, that are generated. Last, last question to you both. And, and, and this is the, the impossible question, but, but what's, what's kind of currently on your radar in, in terms of risk? Is it, is it politics? Is it, is it the, the economic factors? Is it you know, the weather? What, 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 what really is, the, what are the big risks that are out there? Oh, we're not going to talk politics, but um, I think you know, in most cases it's, it's really still supply-based risk. Okay. And in many cases it's, it's, it's driven by the economics. But if you can imagine that it's not the decline in the business, but potentially the upturn in the business. Mm -hmm. And what you have is a scenario where because of the economic conditions, many smaller organizations, smaller companies, the SMEs of the world, are struggling to be able to fund their own growth. And I think that adds considerable risk that, that we really haven't identified. Yeah. Again, particularly at the tier two. So if there's one that's on my radar, it's going to be one that I can control and one yeah. that I can control and identify is potentially those hidden risks within the supply base. Okay, and lastly, Brian, if people want to access this information, they want to learn more about what you presented today and they want to access some assistance on supply chain. Where do the, where, where's the touch point within Avnet that they can do that? Well, of course, they can go ahead and go to our supply chain solutions website. So I look for Avnet Supply Chain Solutions.com, I believe is where we're at. Um, and also, we would say, you know, if you just want general knowledge and a chance to talk with other people in your in the community, we have we are sponsors of the Supply Chain Network, mm -hmm. uh, which is a chance for people to really communicate with their peers about issues that are happening inside of the supply chain okay. and just kind of general knowledge and learning, which is what we're trying to promote inside okay. of that. Okay. Well, guys, thanks for the presentation. Thanks for chatting. Always a pleasure. And enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you. To get you here quickly. You should start from here. And let us take care of everything in between. Flextronics SBS. Innovative manufacturing services.